Interestingly, one of the things that, again, blows my mind in the back story is that I was scheduled to preach for an MLK service in Beaumont, Texas uh, in January of uh, 81, 81, yeah, it had to be 81. And so I go to uh, preach, but I have to drive because, you know, they told me, you know, get there the best way you can, we'll reimburse you. I said, cool, so I ended up driving, borrowing a car from a frat brother, get to Beaumont, and only, that's when I discovered that I'm there on the wrong Sunday. Uh, I didn't have an assistant, so I'm thinking I was supposed to be there the fourth Sunday in January. It's the third Sunday in January. And so the pastor's wife, because the pastor's out of town, I call her and ask, you know, I tell her I'm here, and she says, well, you're supposed to be here last Sunday. What happened? And so uh, she said, well, just come over, and you can stay the night and then get back on the road in the morning. I had no money. I'd run out of gas and this was not good. So I go over her house, stay the night. While I'm asleep, she calls her husband who's preaching out of town. He calls a friend and his friend says, man, I need a preacher tomorrow because uh, my, my, my guest is sick and he can't preach. What can I do? He says, oh man, this is good. Uh, young Freddie Haynes from Dallas, Bishop College student is in town. This is the largest black church in Beaumont. So I ended up preaching there. And when I preached there, uh, unbeknownst to me, Reverend Castle had pastored in Beaumont. Matter of fact, he pastored the church pastored now by uh, my good friend, John Adolph. And uh, when I preached for Adolph, I look and there's Pastor Castle's picture on the wall. So, so there's a whole lot of backstory going on. and. So I, I preach there that Sunday, and they are very kind to me. They get me back to Dallas, give me enough money basically to cover my books and most of my remaining tuition. And But unbeknownst to me, this is one of the best friends of Pastor Castle. He calls Pastor Castle, tells Pastor Castle about me. Pastor Castle says, I know him. His dad and I were good friends. Where is he? He says he's in Bishop College. Monday, I'm on my way to class. The phone rings. It's a pay phone uh, in the hallway. I walk by it. The dorm mother says, I know you hear the phone ringing. And so I said, but I got to get to class. You hear the phone ringing. So I answer the phone. And on the other end, somebody says, may I please speak to Frederick Haynes? I said, who is this? And he says, my name is Robert L. Castle. And uh, I knew your dad. And uh, I pastor here in Dallas, Friendship West. My best friend told me you preached yesterday in Beaumont, and I got to have you at Friendship West. And uh, so I said, where's that? And so he tells me it's on Polk Street. And that is the beginning because about the, that summer was when I was able to preach, July. I preached for him in the summer. and. Uh, at the A-frame on Polk Street. And I never will forget it because it was, for me, a very humbling experience. I felt like I flunked. Uh, and then after church, uh, no one really spoke to me. And I'm like, this was not good. And so he takes me back to school, tells me he'll pick me up the next day uh, to give me my honorarium. So I said, okay, cool. He picks me up and he says, man, the people love you. You got to come back. I said, no, I didn't feel the love. And I didn't say that out loud, but I said that to myself. He said, can you come next month? And so I said, no, doc, uh, I'm booked. I was lying, but I was going back to, uh, San Francisco to go home for a month. And then he said, well, can you come in September? I said, no, doc, I'm booked. I'm really lying now because I ain't booked. He said, okay, October. I said, I'm booked in October. I got to do this. And he said, all right, first Sunday, February 1982. I need you to preach for me. I know you ain't booked that Sunday because that's communion Sunday and ain't nobody having you preach that Sunday. So I said, I said okay, I'll be there. I became a member because of uh, several events that took place. First of all, I had moved to the neighborhood and after moving to the neighborhood, 
we Happy New Year, fabulous family of faith. Here's what's happening at the West. It's a new year, and of course, it's a new you. Well, that's what we always say, right? But we need to add something to our list of things to do for 2024, which is getting closer to God. How? Glad you asked. By signing up for the 52 Weeks with God, which is a daily Bible reading program that begins in January and ends in December. If you want to learn the word for yourself, this Bible reading program is for you. Classes are on site and online, so you can register at htbibleinstitute.org. Also, you can join us for Sunday school every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. right here at Friendship West or every Tuesday online at 7 p.m. You can sign up online at htbibleinstitute.org as well. The healthcare ministry will be conducting free health screenings every third Sunday of the month. Visit their table in the North X or stop by the healthcare room to get checked out. The Justice Ministry, under the leadership of Reverend Danielle Ayers, is seeking attorneys and other legal workers to join the Justice Ministry and create a team to assist with legal initiatives within the Justice Ministry. If you are an attorney or you work in the legal field, be on the lookout for the upcoming Legal Interest and Engagement Survey. For more information, please email justice at friendshipwest.org. Attention all young adults, we have something strictly for you. It's called the Tribe Lounge. The Tribe Lounge is a Bible study experience for young adults that would occur the first Tuesday of every month in room A209, which is basically the baptistry. The Tribe Young Adult Ministry would like to provide an enlightening and uplifting atmosphere as we study the Word of God and make it applicable to our everyday lives. For more information, contact Albany Haynes by email at ahaynes at friendshipwest.org. Greetings, this is Pastor D.A. Plan to attend attend our annual MLK teach-in on Saturday, January 13, 2024. Dr. King warned us that we must have a revolution of values if we are to live in this world house. I can't think of a better trio to give us hope other than Dr. Haynes, Dr. George Mason, and Congresswoman Cori Bush, who is not just a sitting Congresswoman, she is a pastor, a nurse, and an activist. And they will talk to us about what a revolution of values looks like and what we must do if we are to live in this world house and if it is going to stay in. We will also have a community listening session and an organizing training so we can hear directly from you, the community. We want to know what your needs are and how we can organize for social change. And this day is for everybody, parents, sign up your children and your youth. It's free to attend, but you must register because we want to provide lunch. Thank you so much, Friendship with Family and Community, and we look forward to seeing you on Saturday, January 13th, 2024, 10 o'clock a.m. Metroplex, get ready. They're coming. It's the Legends Tour. Donnie McCorkin Hezekiah Walker. Marvin Sapp. And Yolanda Adams. The Legends Tour, March 1st at Friendship West Baptist Church. Hosted by comedian Jay Lamont. Tickets available on Eventbrite. Or get yours at Friendship West Baptist Church. There are several ways to get connected with all things Friendship West. You can stop by the Connection Center in the North Dex on every Sunday to find out ways to get involved in ministries as well as volunteer opportunities. Or you can jump to our website, scroll on over to the Connect tab. There you will find more information about prayer, prayer requests, volunteer opportunities, as well as a list of ministries you might be interested in joining in 2024. In the words of our senior pastor, don't wait, don't hesitate, don't vacillate. Visit FriendshipWest.org, scroll over to the Connect tab and get connected to the ministry that best fits your needs. Another way to stay connected and locked in with Friendship West is to follow us on all social media platforms such as YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc., etc. Also, you can sign up for our text alerts by simply texting FWBCINFO to the number 28950. Go ahead, do it right now. Text FWBCINFO to the number 28950. Well, unfortunately, that's all I have for you for this week's edition of What's Happening at the West. But before we go, we would like to thank our 
our visitors who are here with us to check us out online as well as in person. We know that you could have went anywhere else in the world, but you decide to worship with us. And for that, we're grateful. If you have a church home, best believe we're praying for you and that ministry. But if you are church homeless, we would love for you to join us. And Pastor Haynes would love to be your pastor here at the Wild Wild West. We're large enough to serve you, but we're also small enough to love you. So in your search for a church, you can end your quest at Friendship West. Why? Because at Friendship West, we ain't got nothing but love for you. Until next time, deuces. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice. I will rejoice. Come on, make it your personal testimony. I will rejoice. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. We must rejoice and be glad in it. Aren't you excited to be in church on this first Sunday of the new year? Isn't that proof of God's keeping power? Isn't that proof that God is a sustainer, that he's a preserver? And we owe him this morning our very best praise. For those of you who are watching us online, we say thank God for you. And you hear that sudden sound of applause. That's because we're grateful. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you are here with us this morning. Go ahead and be seated in the presence of the Lord. One more announcement for you that we want to share from the office of the senior pastor who wants to invite the entire community, the entire family of faith to join us on February 1st and February 2nd of this new year as we celebrate together the honor of this historic installation ceremony of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes III, as the president and the CEO of Rainbow Push Coalition. Oh, come on, give God praise for that. That God continues to use our pastor to make a difference across this community across the country and across the world. Just a little bit of information for you. Thursday, February 1st, we will host a 7 p.m. At 7 p.m., the official installation ceremony held at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. It will be a free, let the church say free, a black tie formal event, but tickets are required. Friday, February 2nd, the organization will also host a one-day social justice conference at Paul Quinn College with confirmed speakers including Tamika Mallory, Dr. Brianna Parker, Pastor Mike McBride, Jesse Jackson Jr., Reverend Tisha Dixon-Williams, among other respected leaders. Uh, this is going to be an empowering event geared to preparing churches and activists, organizations, and community members for the 2024 election cycle. Registration and tickets go live this Thursday on the Rainbow Push Friendship West Baptist Church as well as Dr. Haynes' website and social media platforms. If you've got questions, you can email Alicia Trustee, Pastor Haynes, Chief Strategist at a trustee at rainbowpush.org for sponsorship, vendor, as well as media information. Come on, give God one more round of praise as we celebrate the installation of our senior pastor. As this is the first Sunday of the new year, we enter this year recognizing that God is up to something in our midst. Over and over again this year, we will hear from our senior pastor, from those responsible for the teaching and the preaching about mission, about purpose, and about calling. Because from Pastor Haynes' perspective, God has equipped each and every one of us with a mission, with a purpose, and with a call. That means that we have a duty and a responsibility in this year to spend time with God, discerning, Lord, where is it that you want me to serve? Archimedes, the great philosopher, said, if I had a place to stand and a lever, I can move the whole earth. We have a place to stand. The Word of God is our lever. And if we allow God to open our heart and our mind to what he has called us to, we together can move the world. Let's look to the Lord. Father, in your name, we believe you for the good things that you have in store for us. 2023 is behind us. 
2024 and beyond is before us. And we need you to help us on this way. Walk with us, Lord. Talk with us, Lord. All along this tedious journey, we need you to speak a word today. And so we're grateful that you've given a word to our pastor. You're going to allow him to, to speak a word from out of the depths of your profound wisdom. You're going to allow him to speak the inscrutable mysteries of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help someone in the sanctuary or online to grab a hold of that anchor, to plant themselves, to, to situate themselves in the good ground of the word that in due season we might grow strong enough to bear fruit that you will be proud of. Bless our time together. Bless the worship. May your Holy Spirit may be made manifest. May you meet us here. May we see you in a true and a real and a radical way. Do what only you can do, and we're going to get out of the way. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we ask and pray. And the people of God said together, amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Friendship West. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Good morning, Friendship West. Come on, can y'all stand on your feet and help us praise God together? We can do it together. Come on.
song and everybody will fall in, right? Hello? Right? Catch it. Pass it. I don't know what 
you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. to praise his name. I came to praise his name. Want to praise his name. Oh, there it is. Everybody clap your hand. We gotta move. Come on, you can just praise him right there. Come on. Praise him for the blood, saving blood, healing blood, keeping blood. The blood still works. Aren't you glad that the blood still works? Kings and kingdoms have failed and empires have fallen, but I'm so glad that the blood is now outmoded, not outdated, doesn't need an update. So glad that the blood still works. And because it works, he's still worthy of glory and honor and praise. Won't you open up your mouth? Come on, praise into his presence. Come on, Shabbat the Lord. Give him a praise that is equal to his power in your life, to his might in your life. Give him a praise equal to every miracle, every problem solved, every door open, every window closed, every enemy defeated, every anointing provided. Won't you give God praise? Go to your seat with a praise in your heart. As we come now to remember what God did for us at Calvary. If you're watching us online, we want you to participate in this significant moment in the life of the church. Grab your bread. Grab your grape juice, your wine, as we come to reflect and remember the work of Christ, the work of Christ at Calvary. Communion is a Sankofa moment. 
one that requires us to look back in order to go forward. It is a meal that looks back in order to celebrate what God is doing right now. It looks at the old to sanctify the new thing that God is doing in our midst. Jesus celebrates this meal with his disciples as they are reflecting reverently upon the Passover meal where the death angel passed over every house covered by the blood of a lamb. And now Jesus prepares to inaugurate a new era where all believers could rejoice that death had been defeated, that it had been consumed in victory, that the grave had been robbed of its sting. They celebrated that meal as high priests served in the temple nearby as mediators between God and humanity, offering sacrifices of unblemished lambs. But Jesus comes to do a new thing, to be both high priest and a sacrificial lamb slain before the very foundation of the world so that the scripture might be true. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have a high priest who in every respect has been tested as we are, and yet he has been without sin. As we come to the table, let us examine ourselves, as Paul says, to discover what might be obstructing the new thing God wants to do in you. What a shame it would be to walk into a new year holding on to old stuff when God is trying to do a new thing. What a shame it would be to hold on to old grudges, old attitudes, old behaviors, old mindsets, old dogmas, old traditions, old outmoded conceptualizations when God speak to us from beyond time and eternity to declare, behold, I make all things new. So we come to the table looking back on what God has done but looking forward to what God will do. As we eat this bread, as we drink this wine, may we become co-participants in the new thing God is doing.
church say amen on the night that Jesus was betrayed he took bread he blessed it he broke it he gave it to his disciples he said take and eat all of it this is my broken body which is broken for you and for all so that sin might be forgiven let us eat together In like manner, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples. He said, this is no more wine, but a symbol of my blood, the blood of a new and everlasting covenant shed for you and for all so that sin might be forgiven. Let us drink together. Let us pray. Lord, in your name, we thank you for the sacrifice of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Thank you that the blood still works. Thank you that it'll never lose its power. Thank you that we can never be so high or so low that the blood won't reach us. Thank you that it flows to high mountains and to low valleys. Thank you that the blood is strength. Now, O oh God, empower us by the message and the meaning of this meal to live and to love and to lead as you did. Help us to be more like you and the world will be a better place. Bless us, keep us until we shall celebrate again. In the name of Jesus, we pray through the Holy Spirit, according to your word and amen. back real quick of what God has done for me. And I'm, I'm, I just want to sing this song. Has God been good to anybody in this building? Mm -hmm. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is... Mm -hmm. Look at somebody and say, he's been that good. I don't think they believed you when you said it. He's been that good. Yeah, he been good. But look at somebody else and say, he's been that good. Is that B-flat? Oh, you've been, you've been good to me. I'm just sitting here thinking about it, looking back over my life. You've been, you've been good.
to me When I was down and out Thinking about it, yes. Looking back over my life, you've been, you've been good to me. When I was down and out, I didn't have one dime. You didn't leave me, no. You stopped at no time, Lord. You. said you've been a mother and a father too you've been a sister and a brother too you didn't leave me no you stayed right by my side and when trouble came you wiped the tears from my Just step in and so dead. Stand back and behave. Lord, you brought me. Hey, you brought me from a mighty long way. Let's take it out. Hey, yeah. You brought me. You brought me from a mighty long way. See, you brought me. You brought me from a Jesus said thank you, you late in the midnight hour you, when I couldn't sleep at night you, yeah, you stayed with me you, and you held me you, and you told me it'll be all right you, that's why I gotta say thank you Jesus with me. Thank 
Jesus, nobody like him. Jesus. Nobody like him. Jesus. Nobody like him. Jesus. Nobody like him. Jesus. 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 Ain't nobody Jesus. to me like him. Jesus. Ain't nobody Jesus. hold me like him. Jesus. Ain't nobody Jesus. rock me like him. Jesus. 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 He's the person. He's the lion. Show up, and then he'll show up. I said he'll show up, and then he'll show up. Hey, hey, Jesus, hold on to me, 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 hold on to me. When your body's rocking with pain, he'll step in, he'll heal you. Building money, he'll provide. She was, she was, ain't nobody to me like her. Ain't nobody to me like that. She was, she was, she was, she was, she was, streaming down your face. He will wipe every tear. Say you brought me, you brought me from a mighty, from a mighty, Somebody praise him. I said somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. I said somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Been good. Oh, taste and see. I said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, oh, oh, the Lord is good. I said, The Lord is good. He's been better to me than I can ever be to myself. I ain't gonna let no rocks cry out for me, but I will. I said, I times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. You could have lost your mind. Listen, I almost lost my mind, but praise got me through. Worship got me through. The word got me through. I almost took myself out of here, but greater is he. I said greater is he. You want to shout right now? 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 I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. You want to shout right now? You want to shout right now? The devil tried to take your praise, but I dare you to get up and say, God, I bless you.
Hallelujah. 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 Anybody know God is good? Come on, give God a good praise. No, give God a great praise. God is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray, God, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for the blood that still works and will never lose its power. Thank you for the privilege of praise and for your presence in our praise. Thank you for your word, for how your word orders our steps, speaks to our spirits, our situations, and yes, even the spirit of the times. God, we need a word from you. We need to hear from you. We don't hear from you, God, what shall we do? So please remove any distractions that may divert our attention. Don't let me or anything in me or about me get in the way of what you are up to, what you want to say and accomplish through me. Have your way. Have your way. You are the potter, we are the clay. Mold us and make us after your will. While we are waiting, yielded and still. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And hallelujah. Praise God with me for our praise team. They ain't playing. They brought it. Praise God for Pastor David Malcolm Magruder. Amen. What a word. Thank you. I want to call your attention in, uh, as we kick off this new year. Uh, to a passage of scripture found in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, and there in the fourth chapter, in the first verse, we find these words. I'm going to read to you from the New American Standard Bible, translation of the Greek, and then uh, on my way here, uh, I was hit with the Freddie Haynes remix, and so I'm going to give you Freddie Haynes remix. So sorry, Chris, it just hit me while I was right driving. Uh, but here it is from the New American Standard Bible. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you've been called. Freddie Haynes remix reads, I, therefore, as one who has been sent up and set up and called a case, serving time in Christ my liberator, am rooting and cheering for you to live your best life and RSVP for the call of God that is on your life. You may be seated in God's presence. I want to put a tag on this text, and in these few moments, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach, I'm just built different. I'm just built different. Killer Mike testifies, I remember sitting all alone in the church service, asking God to reveal me a plan and a higher purpose. I was turned on to Killer Mike's album last year by Chris Norman. Chris said, Pastor, you got to check out Killer Mike. One of the first pieces I listened to Killer Mike is transparently testifying about sitting, watch this, alone in church service, hurting, hoping that God would reveal to him a higher plan and purpose. I hang out right there because Killer Mike is not alone. Note with me that Killer Mike says he's sitting alone, hurting while in church service. I've discovered that you can come to church and never know what people are going through. You can come to church and have someone seated right next to you who is enjoying the worship and yet they are worried in a real sense. They are watching you celebrate and praise the God of heaven, but you don't know what hell they've been dealing with. That's why whenever you show up in worship, do your best to offer a smile to the person that you are coming in contact with because you don't 
know what they're up against. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know the hell they've had to overcome just to get to church. A whole lot of folk come to church and look good, but life has gone bad. And so Killer Mike says, I'm sitting, wait, alone. I got to park right there because Killer Mike knows that he's not by himself in church. There are other people, and yet have you ever been in a crowd and felt alone? Have you ever been in the fellowship and did not feel a part of the fellowship? Have you ever found yourself around people yet feeling isolated? How terrible it is to be around people who are inspired and yet you are feeling isolated. Killer Mike says, I'm in church service hurting and alone and hoping that somehow I'll experience God's higher plan and purpose for my life. I park right here parenthetically because already I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid. I've called out your flavor because if you're honest with yourself today, here you are in church service. The year has kicked off and already life has gone wrong. Already stuff has blown up in your face. Already what you set out to do has been upended by life coming at you that you did not send for. I'm simply suggesting that you can show up in church on Sunday and while worshiping the God of heaven, you can be catching some hell. Yes, my sisters and brothers, that in a real sense is something that all of us wrestle with if we're honest. That didn't get you. I'll see if I can make it real plain. Yesterday, I'm flying back from speaking for the, out, the Ice Cold Brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha at Hampton, and, and I'm speaking there for their MLK service. I'm flying back, and while flying back, I'm working on my sermon. I have my computer open, and I'm checking out an article that arrested my attention last week for a sermon, but I did not get to present it, and so this week, I'm digging deeper, checking it out, and check out what I, w what I was looking at. I'm reading an article about a rogue wave, R-O-G-U-E, a rogue wave that hit a ship, a Norwegian cruise liner called the Ms. Maud, where they're on the North Sea in Europe. Watch it. The Norwegian cruise liner is cruising on the North Sea, and while cruising on the North Sea, out of nowhere, it is hit. It is shocked and rocked by a rogue wave. A rogue wave is a massive wave that appears unexpected out of nowhere and it can cause extreme damage. Some ships have been capsized because they were shocked and rocked by a rogue wave. Well, this rogue wave, it hit a Norwegian cruise liner called the Ms. Maud, December 22nd or 23rd of 2023. And when this rogue wave hit the cruise liner, one testified that she looked up and all she could see was a wall of water, a wall of water that hit the ship. It's one thing, don't miss this, to be to hit a wall. It's another thing to be hit by a wall. While I'm reading the article, the person next to me, uninvited, decides to look at what I'm reading. I'm minding my business. He should have his own, and yet he looks at what I am reading and says, listen, I was on that ship. Now he can get in my business because I'm hoping that I can get additional insight from him. His name is Chris. I didn't get his last name, but Chris, my sisters and brothers said, yes, I was on that ship. And when the ship, watch this, was hit by the rogue wave, it knocked the power.
power out. I'm not done. I look at the headline of the article because the headline said, Rogue Wave Kills Navigation System on a Norwegian Cruise Liner. I said, do you see that? He said, yeah, that's what happened. Now, let me back up and grab you because here is a cruise ship on its way somewhere. Its itinerary is intercepted and interrupted by what is unexpected, a rogue wave out of nowhere. And when the rogue wave out of nowhere hits, no, rocks and shocks the ship, it kills the navigation system. Well, y'all didn't get the metaphor. I'll have to make it plain. Imagine a cruise ship that no longer has a navigation system. That means it has no sense of direction to get from where it is to where it wants to go. It is a cruise ship on its way somewhere, but something unexpected out of nowhere, a massive rogue wave, it rocks and shocks the ship. And according to the headline of the article, it killed the navigation system. And now, please don't miss this, the ship is without power. I think I'll stop and unpack that for just a moment because Chris, seated next to me, invites himself into a conversation as one who was an eyewitness to what took place and said, yes, we lost navigation, but out of losing navigation, I believe God gave me direction. I'm going to park right there and hang out because Chris, my sisters and brothers, goes on to share at that moment I found myself at, uh, while on that cruise ship I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life because I'm graduating from med school in May and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I have job offers. I'm set up. Everything is looking good and yet I feel like I'm on a ladder going nowhere. Now that's why I want to hang out. A ladder going nowhere because if you're not careful, that can be your life. Note with me, Chris is about to graduate from med school and yet felt at that moment that his life was like he was climbing a ladder going nowhere, meaning going up and yet up is really nowhere, meaning he's going from one level to the next, but he's going nowhere and somebody is looking at me right now. You have climbed the ladder of success and yet you feel like you're nowhere. You've gone from one level to the next and yet you feel like you're nowhere. Watch this. Chris said it's while he's experiencing a ladder going nowhere, which by the way is also a poem, that Chris discovers my sisters and brothers that navigation can get killed and that's when God unveils direction. I'm coming for you in just a moment because that was a shout right there but I got to go back to the ship because the navigation is down. The power is out. Imagine that at sea. Helpless now. The waves are rocking and everything is basically saying you have no control. They have no power. The navigation system has been knocked out and Chris feels like he's climbing a ladder going nowhere. I want to hang out and deal with those metaphors because maybe as we embark on this new year that some of you feel like you're climbing a ladder. You've experienced success but you have success without fulfillment. That's a ladder going nowhere. Some of you are making paper and yet in spite of the paper that you're making, you still don't feel like your life has meaning and purpose. That's a ladder going nowhere. Hold on, my sisters and brothers, because not only can your life be a ladder going nowhere, but understand from that ship, Ms. Maud, that you can find yourself rocked and shocked by something that was unexpected that will knock out your sense of navigation where you won't know where you are, where you're going, or how to get from where you 
are to where you'd like to go. And that's where we are today. Here we are at the outset of a new year. Don't you want this year to be better than last year? And yet, if you're not careful, a rogue wave will hit your life. And before you know it, it will, no it will knock off your equilibrium. And now you're trying to figure out where you are, not to mention where you can go. And that, my sisters and brothers, is where I want to hang out because I want to suggest that the author of this book, as well as the recipients of this book of Ephesians, had been hit by a rogue wave in their respective circumstances. Well, we understand that Ephesians is a prison epistle that has been ascribed to the authorship of the gospel globetrotter and trailblazing theologian from Tarsus, the articulate African apostle Paul. And yet there are scholars who say that no, it really couldn't because of the language and because of the perhaps when it was written be assigned to the apostle Paul. And so they say it's a protege of Paul, a Paulinian, if you please, who is writing and note what this Paulinian does. This Paulinian, in essence, has experienced, here it is, or in essence, so identifies with Paul that he talks about the rogue wave of injustice that Paul had experienced. Paul, watch this, is now in prison, in prison unjustly. It ain't right, it ain't fair, and yet he's in prison. And so Paul is in prison, and that is a rogue wave of injustice. Y'all, injustice is a rogue wave that will leave you feeling handcuffed by helplessness. Injustice is a rogue wave where you find yourself overwhelmed by powers greater than yourself. Paul is now a prisoner of Caesar. Wait, I'm not done because there's another rogue wave, and this rogue wave has to do with what is happening or being addressed in this book. The brilliant womanist scholar Mitzi Smith writes about Ephesians that it reads, don't miss this, like a legal document that is trying to be, bring about a merger between two entities, one foreign and one domestic. Those of you with legal backgrounds would love the book of Ephesians because again, Mitzi Smith says it's a legal document in essence that is bringing together foreigners with those who are domestic, Gentiles with those who are Jews. They are coming together in a merger. It's a legal document, but here is what Mitzi says that blows my mind, and that is oftentimes when the writer is addressing the Gentiles, he uses, watch this, the second person plural, you or y'all. In essence, he is making them feel like they are segregated and separated and second-class citizens, if you please. There is is a, and Mitzi goes on to use the language of Du Bois and says the Gentiles are experiencing in the church that two-ness, that, that sense, watch this, of living under the gaze of another and as a consequence they are seen as a problem. How? Du Bois asks, does it feel to be a problem? And so my sisters and brothers, please get this, the Gentiles were segregated at the time and treated as second-class citizens. There was, in essence, please don't miss this, a kind of a double standard that was going on. Ah, oh, we get that, don't we? A double standard because we watched it unfold this week as the first black female president in the history of Harvard University basically had to resign because 
because of the relentless hail that she was catching. And y'all, please understand, it was not about the principle of plagiarism. It was about pigmentation and power because the bottom line is whenever black folk find themselves in positions of power, especially in the aftermath of the successful presidency of Barack Obama, there is a white gaze that is very upset because it's like to see every day for eight years a black family in the White House. It really messed up some of those folk. And so now they've done it. They're doing everything in their power to wipe out opportunities. Do you really think that the assault on diversity, equity, and inclusion is an accident? Do you really think the whole concept of make America great again is an accident? No, y'all. And make America great again is harking back to a white only time. It's harking back to a time of white supremacy. And so I'm trying to let you know as they try to erase black history as they do everything in their power to go after black folk in high places. Please understand that Dr. Gay was on to something. This is bigger than her. It's not just about her. It's about black women who have the audacity to aspire to go higher and find themselves in positions of power. Y'all can look strange at me all you want to, but there's a double standard. Did it not blow your mind that the same man who went after Dr. Gay, his wife has plagiarized her own dissertation. Now, what you gonna do about that, ass man? Are you going to go after your wife and have her resign and hand in her dissertation? It's a double standard, a double standard because it ain't about plagiarism. It's about your pigmentation and power. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going there today, so y'all might as well ride with me, okay? And so here we have it. Here we have it in the text. We have... Uh Ah, a merger where, where Mitzi says that, that the writer is trying to bring together to break down the wall of segregation and second class citizenship. And so that's why when you get to chapter four, it's amazing. It begins with that conjunction. Therefore, we have some brilliant folk in the house today. And I might as well let y'all know, I didn't always know what a conjunction was, but, but one Saturday morning back in the day I'm watching cartoons and, and a song came on. The song said conjunction, junction. What's Y'all saw it too. The function of a conjunction is to connect what's before with what's after. And when you see the conjunction therefore, it means you've got to read what's before therefore so you can know what therefore is therefore. And so chapter four, watch this. It begins therefore, which means you've got to read chapters one, two, and three. And most agree it is those chapters are theological in their substance, theological. Why? Because you've got to have good theology or you will end up with a sick sociology and a messed up anthropology. I'm remixing William Augustus Jones Jr. I'm simply saying uh, you got to have your theology right because if you thought about the fact a lot of the neo-fascism is coming from folk who claim the name of Jesus. Now, we know they worship white Jesus, and white Jesus has a history of being hell for black people. First of all, white Jesus is a lie. You cannot grow up in Northeast Africa and be pale faced. You, you cannot grow up in that area and not have curly hair to help you deal with the sun. And y'all, I'm simply trying to say that they have created Jesus in their 
their white supremacist image and likeness. And so now I understand I don't worship the same God as Robert Jeffries. I don't worship the same God as Paula White. I can't worship their God. As a matter of fact, I know ah, that Irie Sessions and Paula White, they ain't serving the same Jesus because here it is. Their Jesus is a conqueror. Our Jesus is an empowering liberator. Our Jesus shows up in Egypt and emancipates the oppressed. Our Jesus was born homeless. Our Jesus grew up in the hood. Our Jesus gave free health care to those who had pre-existing conditions. Our Jesus took a two-piece and five biscuits and fed those who were food insecure. Our Jesus led a march on Jerusalem. Our Jesus got beat down by the Roman police and went to the hell of a kangaroo court and got lynched on Friday but got up early Sunday morning. That's my Jesus. So I, 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 I don't know. I don't know who, who, who they believe in. But, but, but when you read, when you read Ephesians chapter 1, I like chapter 1 because chapter 1 talks about in summary that, that we, oh my God, have access to every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You didn't shout. Uh, even as we walk earth, we ain't just trying to get to heaven. We have access to heavenly resources. We have access to heavenly power. Uh, that's why in the old school church, we sang a song, Come ye disconsolate, where e'er ye languish, come to the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Here bring your wounded hearts. Here tell your anguish. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal, meaning we have access to every spiritual blessing in heavenly places even as we navigate earth y'all didn't shout I gotta keep it moving though at the end of chapter one or the middle of chapter one I love it because Paul or the Paulinian is declaring here's your shout right here and that is we are free because we've been forgiven you didn't shout I'll go ahead and bless you anyhow we are free for because we are forgiven, meaning uh, what I've done doesn't get in the way of who I can become uh, because I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb uh, and the blood of the Lamb sets me free from what I was so I can become who I meant to be. But not only that, the text lets us know it's all because of the fact that we also have access to the power of the resurrection. Uh, you see, once a year, we celebrate Easter, but every day we live in resurrection. Y'all didn't get that. I'm simply saying that if all you do is celebrate the resurrection on Easter Sunday, you are living beneath your possibility and power because when you know Jesus for yourself, you recognize that you have access every day to the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And then in chapter 2, go goes on to write about the fact that we've been saved by grace through faith. It's not anything that you've done yourself. It's that God just loves us and God's grace loves the hell out of us. So no matter who you've been, what you've done, the good news is that ain't the last word on you. God's grace loves you anyhow. And we are saved by grace through faith to become God's masterpiece pieces, God's poems as it were. And then here's what the writer says that kills me. The writer says that God now through Christ has broken down the middle wall of segregation and separation between Jew and Gentile. God says your racist ways ain't working now because Christ has broken down the middle wall of partition. I got to keep it moving because now in chapter 3, he talks about praying for the people
people of God and how he prays for them every day and then wraps that thing up with my favorite doxology now unto the one who is able to keep who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or imagine according to the power at work within you y'all didn't shout I've talked fast so let me slow my row and give you every shout bomb now unto the one now unto him is what many say now unto the one y'all know who the one is the one is a heart fixer a mind regulator a burden bearer a bridge over troubled waters I'm talking about the one the one my sisters and brothers who is in a real sense Yahweh Elohim El Elyon El Shaddai Jehovah Jireh Jehovah Rapha Jehovah Rohi Jehovah Shalom Jehovah Nisi now unto the one wait who is able I'm so glad to know God is able God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or y'all still not shouting God can blow your mind God can surprise you has God ever done something for you you didn't ask for has God ever done something for you you weren't ever thinking about God surprised you God blew your mind now under him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine wait according to the power at work within you you ain't helpless you're not anybody's victim you are God's child and you've got a power at work within you that's mind-blowing a power at work with you in you waiting to be unleashed and now the writer says therefore 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 watch this you built different now 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 y'all know that's not original with me I think I think I think sponge boy uh, rap artist uh, has a song and in the song he says I'm just built different he talks about I would have lifted the Titanic I'm just built different I'm just built different y'all did not get in this so built different in the language of the culture when someone says I'm built different they're saying in essence I'm extraordinary when they say I'm built different they're saying I'm something you ain't seen nothing like yet I'm 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 built different so so don't look at me and hope I'm gonna be like your last one because I'm built different don't don't come at me acting like I'm going to be like somebody else because I'm built different and I think I'm gonna stop and give y'all time to shout because if you know God for yourself you better recognize baby Baba you built different you were made in the image and likeness of God you're built different you're a child of the king you're built different you're the head and not the tail you built different you on top and not on bottom you built anybody in here who can just go ahead and say you know what he talking about me I'm built different I'm the light of the world I'm built different I'm the salt of the earth I'm built different I'm a royal priesthood I'm built different I'm God's chosen people I'm built different I'm built different hallelujah so you take yourself to work tomorrow and if they come at you wrong just say you understand I'm built different I'm built different I'm built different I'm built different I'm trying not to shout, but I'm built different. That's why I hold it together when my world is falling apart. I'm built different. That's why I don't look like the hell I've been through. I'm built different. I'm built different. I'm built different. I'm, I'm, I'm built different. Wait, wait, wait. I'm built different. So God through me can make a difference.
You ain't just built different for different sake. You built different because God wants to use you to make a difference. Okay, so, so how does it work? I'm almost done. Watch the text. It works like this. Promise you I'm almost done. Here's the text. The text says this. It works like this. It says, therefore I, prisoner of the Lord. I like that. Uh, uh, you have a spirit uh, based on who you belong to that gets you through what you're going through. Okay, you, you have a spirit uh, because of who you belong to. Who, capital W, who you belong to uh, that gets you through what you're going through. Now, 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 let me be honest, let me be honest, just because you know Jesus don't mean you ain't going through stuff. Jesus said in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So you're going to go through some stuff. You're going to go through attacks and adversity. You're going to go through seasons of brokenness and feeling burdened. You're going to go through chaos and crises. You're going to go through dangers and difficulties. You're going to go through times of hell and high water. You're going to go through suffering and struggle. You're going to have seasons where you go through. But here's the shout. The shout is when you are going through because of who you belong to, there is a spirit that characterizes rises you. Man, I'd be dropping bars, huh? That was out right there. Uh, uh, watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord. Wait, what? A prisoner of the Lord? No, no, no. You in prison under Caesar. No. No, Caesar's providing the housing. <laughs> but I'm a prisoner of the Lord. That's my disposition that gets me through my condition. Because your conditions may be adverse, but when you have the right disposition, in spite of wrong conditions, God will give you power in the midst of what you're going through. So somehow you're at peace, though you're under pressure. Somehow you in your right mind, though life is going wrong and people are talking about you, but it's bouncing off of you because they know they're talking about you. But they can't get to you because you have the right disposition in spite of wrong conditions. That's hot right there, huh? Uh, 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 uh. Poet, poet, poem said, two men peered out from prison bars. One saw mud, the other saw stars. You didn't shout. Both of them in prison. But one looks down and only sees muck, mire, and mud. The other one in prison looks up, beholds the constellation of the stars that bedeck the heavens as bling of eternity. He's looking up. The other one is looking down. Look at the difference in the disposition. One is looking down. One is looking up. I'm saying uh, when you know the Lord for yourself, you ought not be a mud watcher, but you ought to be a stargazer, lifter up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I'm trying to let somebody know right now, your disposition can overcome your conditions, but wait, wait, God is so good uh, that a wrong turn can, can turn out right. in prison but says I'm a prisoner of the Lord oh you didn't shout I'm a prisoner of the Lord you still didn't shout not Caesar the Lord now under Paul's names letters fill the New Testament some of them he's in prison Paul says I got thrown in prison locked up 
but it gave me a larger platform. So in 2024, on January the 7th, Freddie Haynes is preaching from a letter ascribed to me. And so Caesar thought he could block me. Instead, he set the stage for me to be a bigger blessing than I would have been had I not been locked up. Caesar meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God will use what somebody does to you that's problematic to make a platform that they did not intend for you to have. Is there anybody here who knows that life can go wrong and yet God blesses things to turn out right away? I got to give you one more because the text says this, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. Guess who else was referred to as Lord? Caesar. This is a political statement. And Paul is basically saying what you don't understand, Caesar, is that you, or oh, I like this, are on the throne, but I am transformative. A lot of folk may have the throne, but that don't make them transformational. Uh, Y'all still didn't shout. Y'all do know that Andrew Jackson had the throne. Uh, but Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, and Frederick Douglass, they were transformational. Y'all still didn't get that thing. Uh, Y'all do know that, that who was it? Uh, Woodrow Wilson had the throne. Uh, but Ida Bell Wells and W.E.B. Du Bois, they, they were transformational along with Paul Robeson. Y'all still not getting this. Y'all do know on December 1st, 1955, the bus driver in Montgomery had the throne, but Rosa Parks was transformational. Y'all still not getting this thing. I'm trying to let you know that Bull Connor had the throne, LBJ had the throne, but Martin King was transformational. I'm trying to let, oh, I guess y'all think I'm not in the Bible. Pharaoh had the throne, but Moses was transformational. Saul had the throne, but David was transformational. Pilate had the throne, but Jesus said, don't nobody take my life. I lay it down. If I lay it down, I'll raise it back up again because I don't need a throne when I'm transformational. And I'm trying to let somebody know right now, you go on to work tomorrow. Your boss may have the throne, but if you got the hook up with Jesus, Jesus will give you the power to be transformation. No. Watch this, watch this. Uh, I was traveling somewhere last year and 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 something happened that tripped me out. And that is uh, I'm in the room and 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 I'm I don't want to brag. But don't hate, celebrate, one day you participate. So what happened, I get escorted to my room by a butler. Come on. I'm a bad Negro. I get escorted to the room by a butler. Butler opens up the door. I go in, and I'm just enjoying it. I'm just enjoying it. Uh, I'm just enjoying it. And so the butler opens up the door. So I go in the room, and the butler uh, says, I need you to understand, if you want to, your phone you can use your phone or the remote control to operate everything in the room. I said, really? He said, yeah, everything. I said, you mean the television? He said, I said, he said no, everything. You can turn on the heat, the AC. You can open the, bl you can open the blinds. Uh, you can turn on the TV with the remote control or your phone. And so I said, you kidding me? He said, no, I'm not kidding you. Let, let, let me see your phone. He then took my phone and then did some programming on my phone, connected it to the Wi-Fi in the room. And next thing you know, because of the connection, he said, press this button. I pressed the button and before I knew it, the television came on. And then not only did a blank screen give way to a narration of something in color, but then I pressed another button in a cold room 
gave way to heat. I then pressed another button, and the next thing I know, the blinds began to go up in the room, and the shades began to open. I transformed the room because my phone was connected to a power source in the room, and all I had was a little phone, but that little phone had the power to transform everything around it because of its connection. I guess y'all going to shout in just a moment. Anybody connected? Because when you connected with the greater power, you got power to transform what's around you. That's why Jesus said, you're the light of the world. That's why Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth because you've got the power to transform what's around you because of connection. And that's what we need. We need transformational people. 2024, this country is going to make a decision to be a democracy or neo-fascist. It's going to make a decision. And it's going to be up to persons who are connected to another power to make sure that we rescue this country from itself. Now, y'all may not know this, but that's the history of black folk in this country. We've always had to save this country to become what it claimed it wanted to be. And so only through our connection can we do it. I got to go ahead and wrap this thing up. First, I think I told you the text says about our spirit, but then after our spirit, I love it. He says, I therefore, watch this, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, encourage, exhort you to walk worthy. Stop right there. That means there's a standard you've got to live up to even when life is trying to hold you back and drag you down. A standard you live up to. You've got to have standards. I think, don't judge me, i got to say this gently, sweetly, nicely. That's one of the things Cat Williams was saying. Okay, okay, okay. I see y'all judging me already because... You're supposed to be reading the Bible all week. How do you have time to listen to Club Shay and Shannon Sharp? <laughs> so, 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 so Shannon Sharp interviews Cat Williams and Cat went in. Now, now, I don't like him going in on my boy Ricky Smiley. I like how Ricky responded. Ricky responded with class and having a standard. Shout out to Ricky Smiley. That's my boy. But, but one of the things that Kat said that grabbed me, he said, as a comedian, I have studied all of the greats. I study the best because I want to know. I don't want to just laugh at what they do. I want to know how they do what they do. I study all of the greats. And so I study their timing. I study their storytelling ability. I study that and then try to incorporate the best of what they are doing into my own presentation because there's a standard I'm trying to aspire to. I don't want to be unfunny like, and then he called the role the folk who think he says ain't funny, but what he's saying is there's a standard I'm aspiring to. I want to stop there and pray somebody gets a Cat Williams anointing. If you this year are going to have the year of your life, then maybe you need to study the greats. Study the greats in your chosen field. Learn the best of what they've done and then aspire to be the best that you can become. That's why Martin King would quote the poet Douglas Malick, if you can't be a if you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a shrub in the valley, but be the best little shrub by the side of the real. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It ain't by size you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. I'm trying to let somebody know right now, you ought to make this the year of having standards and the standards that you have ain't contingent upon how well things are going. You make sure if you are in a second class situation, Situation, you hold on to your first class values. You make sure that you have standards, standards that govern you, standards that you live up to, standards that you refuse to give up. Okay. 
Uh, uh, let me quit, let me quit. Uh, I think I've told you about spirit standards. Uh-oh, one more. Text says, I therefore, prisoner of the Lord, encourage you to walk worthy. Walk worthy. Standards. After you walk worthy, I'm done, of the call on your life. Let me, let me, let me, let me slow my roll and break this down. Paul is not writing, or the Paulinian is not writing to the pastor of the church at Ephesus. He's writing to everyone who's in the Ephesian church. And he says, I want all of you to walk worthy of the call that's on your life. That's what I've been trying to get to the whole sermon. The rest of it is free. This is the point I've been trying to come to. You are built different to make a difference because there is a call of God on your life. There is a call to a cause that is bigger than you. There is a call to a mission where you are to make a difference. There's a purpose that your life has been assigned. There's a calling on your life. Callings ain't just for preachers and pastors. Callings are for every blood-bought child of God. And so no matter where you sit in church, there's a calling on your life. From the balcony to the last pew, there's a calling on your life. And if you want this to be a year where you do not climb a ladder to nowhere, then maybe you need to surrender and say, God, what do you want to do with my life? What's the calling of God on your life? Uh-oh. I hear somebody saying, well, I got a job, huh? I ain't talking about your job. I'm talking about your calling. Your job may finance your calling, but your job may not necessarily be your calling, and yet God can use your job to help you get to your calling. What's your calling? Your calling is that which makes a difference in the lives of people. Your calling is that which, watch this, unleashes the power and principles and love of God in the world through you, around you, so that the world is a better place because you are walking in and living in the power of God's call upon your life. And so, so, uh uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh, what you say, God? Ask him, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? That's what God is saying to somebody. Can you hear me now? I've been trying to get you to a certain place where you are living on purpose every single day of your life because I've discovered something, y'all. When you know what your purpose is, what your assignment is, what your mission is, you get up every day energized with expect. May I just testify right quick? Y'all, I got sick last month, and, and it, man, it messed me up because this, this thing knocked me all the way down. And, and Christmas Eve, we had church. I'm on to preach, but I can't. And y'all, it wiped me out. I went into a serious depression because I could not get here and do what I'm called to do. I couldn't get here, and and then all of a sudden it hit me. It hit me. Please don't miss this. It hit me. Okay, I can't get here today, but I can be there next Sunday. I can be there from now on if I handle taking care of me. If I put my mask on, then I'll be able to take care of the mask of those who are around me. And y'all, when that happened, I began to do everything in my power because I had something to look forward to. I'm trying to say when there's a call upon your life, not just a job, but a call, that means you've got something to look forward to and the world is better because of what God is doing through you watch this watch this watch this and you know God is doing it because you do your part and then it turns out even better than what you did yourself 
Oh, Freddie Haynes, you just said something. I'm simply saying you do what God gets you to do, but then when you do it, all of a sudden it turns out even better than you can ask or imagine because God did it through you, but it was God that controlled the consequences. Okay, okay. I know what's happening. I know what's happening. Chris. Y'all, y'all thinking about Chris. And so I'm going to go ahead and quit by giving y'all what happened to Chris. Because I told y'all, Chris, on that ship, said this. He said, I was on a ladder to nowhere. But then the navigation was killed. And I found my direction. Oh, that's good right there. Chris testifies that during uh, the power failure, after the rogue wave hit, he had befriended a young kid, this, this, this little boy, and the little boy was running with Chris, and so during the emergency, they hung out together, and then when the emergency ended and the tugboat was tugging the ship, the father of the boy came along and said, son, I've been looking for you. He said, it's all right. I've been hanging out with my friend Chris during this. And that's when the father shook his hand, said, thank you, walked off with this son. When he walked off with this son, they spent, of course, the evening hanging out. What Chris did not know is that the son was bragging to his dad about the good time that they had had together. And then that's when next, the next day happened. And the next day, the father sees Chris and says, I've been looking for you because my son's been bragging on you. And my son said that you are about to graduate from med school. What are you doing next after you graduate? Because I am the president of such and such hospital, and I'd be happy to give you a job. And Chris said, well, I really appreciate that. He said, well, here's what you do. We got your last semester. And Chris said, why are you doing this? He says, because my son said that when y'all were together, that you were real good to him. And so because of your relationship with my son, I'm going to take care of your last semester. It was then, watch this, that Chris said, well, that's mighty kind of you. But I've got to be honest, I really don't know if I want to work in a hospital because I grew up homeless. You see, my dad died when I was a kid and my mom struggled to make ends meet. I know what it's like to have my mom get sick and the only health care we had was an emergency on the wrong side of town. If I can do anything with my life, what I've discovered last night during the power failure, I don't want to just be a doctor in any hospital. I want to own my own clinic and have a clinic that is especially for those who are unhoused and that's that's when the president of such and such hospital said, well, you know what? That's a part of my vision. And if you don't mind, I'd like to fund a clinic for the unhoused that you give leadership to. And Chris began to cry. And Chris said, why are you doing this? He said, because of your relationship with my son. My son said that during the power failure, y'all hung out during the power failure. Y'all had a good time. And so because of your relationship with my son, I want to do something special for you. Y'all about to get this in just a moment. I'm trying to let somebody know that Chris is going to graduate in May. And Chris is being hooked up to run a clinic for the unhoused. He's going to not just have a job. He's going to fulfill a calling based on what he went through. Through. Here's your shout right here. You want to know what God wants to do through you? It has a lot to do with what you've been through. Because of what you've been through, you have a sensitivity, a compassion. You don't judge folk because of what you've been through. Anybody been through something? God brought you through it, not just to go get a good job. God brought you through it to go back and bring other folk through what you've been through but how do you do it make sure you relate to the son because if you have a relationship with the son the father will make a way out of no way the father will open up doors for you
Listen, every head bowed, every eye closed. I need Christians praying, especially those who've surrendered to your call. Because right now, this is what we're dealing with this year. This year we're dealing with the whole concept, what it means to live called. Because there's a call to ministry on your life. Yeah, you built different. You built different so you can make a difference. You built different because this world needs the gifts, the compassion, the love that God uniquely wants to unleash through you. And so, I'm going to pray in a moment for those who this year you need to say, God, yes. Yes to your will, yes to your way. Yes to the call that you have on my life. I hear you now, and I want to surrender that to that call. But before I do that, if you're here and you're not saved, you're here, and you're not in right relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you're here, and you know good and well that you've been through a whole lot of stuff, but, but it's like you're on a ladder going nowhere. Don't you want to get off that ladder to nowhere? and receive direction for your life? Don't you feel it's time now for you to get connected with the power source around you so you can make a difference in the world around you? Don't you know it's time for you to be saved? It's time for you to know Jesus for yourself. It's time for you to have a connection, a divine connection. And so if you're here and you're not saved, you're not a Christian, you're here, and you know it's time for you to get your life straight with God. Have that connection with God through Christ Jesus. I want you right now, my sister, my brother, man, girl, boy, woman, however you self-identify to stand up, step out of the aisle you're in, come on down front and give your life to Jesus Christ. Don't wait, don't hesitate, don't vacillate. Come on, give your life to Christ. Do it right now. Don't you want that connection? Don't you want to move into a new year, a new you? You can't do it unless you hook up with the one who in him all things are become new. Hook up with the one whose grace will save you, whose grace won't allow what's behind you to define you or confine you. So if you're here and you're not saved, you're here, you're not a Christian, you're here, and you want that connection, that divine connection, here's what you do. Stand up, step out of the aisle you're in, come on down front and give your life to Jesus Christ. Don't wait, don't hesitate, don't vacillate. Do it right now. God is speaking. God's spirit is moving. Won't you come right now? Preacher, here's my deal. I got that part right, but in all honesty, I feel God leading me to join church. I'd like to join this church. I want to be a part of this fellowship, this family. If that's you, we'd love to have you. Come on right now. Stand up, step out, come on down, and let's join church. Preacher, I just moved to Dallas, Fort Worth from another area. I got a church home back there, but now I live here, I work here, I go to school here. I'd like to have a church home here. I see y'all coming. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I'm so glad they are coming because you sitting out there and your deal is this. I didn't want to be the first one to go. And so I don't know if I should move now or later. And so God touched them, and now you know you ain't got to wait, hesitate, vacillate, stand up, step out, come on down, give your life to Christ, and join church. Do it right now. Do it right now. Do it right now. Bless your heart. I see you. Bless your heart. Do it right now. Come on. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. Preacher, here's my deal. In all honesty, I used to go to church. I stopped going, but... I'm ready to get back in church and join church. So come on, let's get back in. Let's start the year off on the right foot. Let's get back in church. I see y'all coming. Come on, give your life to Christ. Join church. Listen, if you're online, you can join church. We'd love to have you. Friendship West is all over the world. Call that number 469-498-0210 or email us at join us at friendshipwest.org and you can join online. Come on and join us. Listen, here it is, here it is. 
God bless you. I see you coming. Bless you. Listen, we're getting ready to stand. When we stand, that's your official signal. Stand up with us. Step out of the aisle you're in. Come on down front. Give your life to Christ. Get that divine spiritual connection. Come on. Join church. Join a community of believers. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. Join church. Let's start the year off on the right foot. Come on. Start the year off right. Y'all ready? Shall we stand and won't you come right now? Give your life to Christ. Join church. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. Lord already told me, don't stop the invitation because of whoever you are and you know who you are. You're wrestling, you're going back and forth and you're saying, should I, shouldn't I? And you got all these excuses in your mind for not doing what the Spirit is leading you to do. And I get it because the excuses sound good. The Bible says the devil disguises himself as an angel of light and so a lot of the stuff devil says it makes sense and so right now you got the devil all in your head give you every excuse for not coming forward and so you wrestling you going back and forth here if you're wrestling with God make sure you lose because that's the only way you're gonna win this year and so so here it is there's another voice speaking that's that inner impulse saying yeah go up there that's God. And the Bible says, the day you hear God's voice, heart, not your heart. So I want to help you right now. I want to help you right now. God is speaking. This year can be a year like no other for you. But listen, however the year is going to be, good, bad, and different, whatever, I don't want to do it without God. Life is hard enough need a power greater than myself. I need connection with the power. I need a sense of call upon. I need a mission, an assignment that my life counts for something. So, so we're going to help you, okay? I need everyone right now whisper this prayer. Lord, if it's my neighbor, touch them. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, somebody just prayed for you. And so if you're here and you know you need to give your life to Christ, you're here and you know good and well, you need that spiritual connection. You're here and you know good and well, it's time to join church. Here it is. They're going to sing one more time. And while they're singing, that's your signal. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. Join church. Don't wait. 
Don't hesitate. Don't vacillate. Y'all sing them on down. Come on, sing. new beginning. Thank you for doing a new thing. These are your children, and we thank you for connecting them with us. In Jesus' name, bless them. Fill them with your spirit. Connect them with the call that's on their lives. Use us as their family to Build them up, provide discipleship opportunities and ministry opportunities for them to work out their soul salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Please go with our discipleship ministry, our ministers. They're going to minister to you. Come on, let's praise God. Praise God. Listen, keep on doing that, okay? Because I want to do this right before we go. And that is, listen, as a child of God, as a Christian, I hope it's not enough for you to simply come to church and then go home. I hope you know God has a call on your life. And so I'm going to pray right now for you. And we're going to begin. We've started this series because I'm convinced there's a calling on your life. And I'm going to ask God to reveal to you what that call is, to show you that call and then set us up as a church where you can, through the church, work out your call and walk worthy of the calling that God has on your life. Shall we pray? God, thank you that you didn't make us by accident, but you have an assignment for us. God, these are your children. They've already said yes to you. And now, oh God, they are seeking to discern your will, your word, and your way for their lives. And so whatever that calling is, speak. Help each and every one to look at what you brought them through and help them to see what you're going to do through them. We thank you now that our lives count for something. We thank you that we ain't got to climb ladders going nowhere. We thank you that you are up to something in, around, and through us. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. Come on, praise God for the call that's on your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, yeah, I love y'all. Y'all, I Listen, it's offering time. It's offering time. It is offering time. What a way to start off the new year. Resolving to tithe. To bring a tenth off the top 
of everything God has blessed you with. You do know that tithing symbolizes that God is first in your life because you're saying, God, I'm giving you a tenth off the top. Tithing says, God, you own my life. You're in control. I'm simply managing it as a good steward. Tithing says, God, I want you to use what you bless me with to be a blessing to others through this ministry. So won't you do that right now? Won't you make that commitment to tithe and be a blessing? Let's pray. God, thank you for the privilege of giving. Use these gifts as expressions of how much we love you, as expressions of your faithfulness to us and our obedience to you. And then use these gifts so that the lost will be saved, so that lives will be transformed, the community will be impacted, and the world will be a better place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, right before we go, I got to do this. If you were born in January, you kicked the year off. We want to celebrate you. All January birthdays, please stand. Please stand, all January birthdays. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. That's awesome. That is so awesome. You look wonderful. Can we pray? God, thank you for the gift of life and for giving these your children another year around the sun. I pray that you will bless their lives in a very special way. May this year be their best year yet. I pray, oh God, that you will bless them and be a blessing through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you got married in January and you're saying, I was married now, please stand so we can celebrate your January wedding and marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Do you know what this month is? It's your anniversary. So we say congratulations to you. God bless you. Let me pray. God, thank you for the gift of life, love, and connecting us with the love of our life. Bless now these couples in a special way to have a month of renewal, a month of reinvigorated love, a month where they, oh God, draw closer to you and to one another. Bless their marriage in Jesus' name. Amen and hallelujah. I, I got some announcements for you. Just two or three, and I'm done. One, great news. This past, what day was it, Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday was the hearing. Uh, it was Wednesday. Yeah, it was Wednesday was the uh, hearing uh, where we filed an injunction, temporary restraining order against the uh, truck company. And uh, the judge ruled in our favor, and we got a TRO. So we got a, we have a temporary restraining order, okay? Uh, and I got to tell y'all, when I got sick, I was binge watching Suits. And so y'all, I came dressed like Harvey. I, I, I was Harv. I was Harv. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> All right. So, so anyway, so we got the TRO, but we got to go back try to get it get it permanent and so but we argued that thing that thing was tight so that was really good so we're we're, we're, we're grateful uh i had another one. Oh yeah uh dr griffin dr griffin please stand dr griffin is the first african-american i got to make sure i read this thing right he's the first this is really, really good. I'm so proud of Dr. Griffin, Dr. James Griffin, born in segregated Parkland unit, is voted the first black president of Parkland medical staff. What? You built different. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. Also, uh, Deacon Wallace, please meet me in the back. Somebody wants to interview you, so please meet me in the back, Deacon Wallace. Oh, here's the last one. Uh, no, next to last one. Uh, yesterday, uh, the women had a powerful experience uh, at uh, Cornbread. What's it called? Oh, yeah. 
kitchen, kitchen and cocktails. And, uh, and Deb preached. Deb really preached. And so, uh, so proud of the sisters for, for all that they are, are doing. Now, now. I need y'all to pray for me because I got two engagements in Dallas and I don't know why they invited me. I have no idea and it's probably going to be the last one. So, so I need your prayers, okay? I'm preaching tonight at 5 o'clock for the Interdenominational Ministers Alliance for their King service. And I don't know why, but they invited me. So if y'all can meet me at, is it New Birth? New Birth Missionary Baptist Church on Leadbetter. New Birth at 5 o'clock on Leadbetter. But, it, but if you don't make it, just pray for your boy, okay? Because I'm just, I, we in a serious time and I can't play no more. And then the city of Dallas has me speaking Saturday. Me, city of Dallas. Boy, I've been working on that. I've been working on that. So, uh, so y'all pray for your boy, cause uh, no, you pray for Dallas, cause uh, I'm gonna be all right. But uh, that, that really tripped me out. When I got that invite, I asked, uh, cause they, you know, got to Alicia. I said, "Are, are you? This ain't no mistake." And so uh, she said, "Yes, they want you." And even asked me if I had a fee. And I said, mm -hmm, God, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Listen, y'all really sang. Thank you so much. Y'all really, 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 really. Lord Jesus, that was hot. All right. So God bless you, Judge. Good to see you, man. Congresswoman, we praying for you. Please, Congresswoman, please stand. We praying for you. She is, of course, uh, our Congresswoman. District 30 succeeded. The legendary icon, Eddie Bernice Johnson, has got to be known. Eddie Bernice Johnson tapped her, said, you the one. She scoped her out and said, you the one to follow me in this seat. And so, of course, we're going to celebrate the life of the legend on Tuesday at Concord. Uh, a lot of folk coming in. Your girl, Maxine Waters, she called me. She's coming. And, uh, huh? Secretary Fudge is coming, so it's going to be fire. So uh, she deserves to be celebrated, and so we thank God for that, and we're praying for you, okay? We're praying for you. God bless you. All right, I got everything. I got everything. Okay, thank you very much. I love you all so much. And Irie Sessions, yes. so good to see you. Huh? Huh? Okay. Where's my mask? I need my mask. All right, I ain't sick no more, but I don't want y'all to make me sick, all right? All right, all right. All right, so God bless you. Deacon Wallace, please come in the back. Please come in the back. All right, Lovey Hawkins, thank you for your work. You're doing the thing, okay? Let's get together about a community meeting, okay? A community meeting so we can do this thing. All right, God bless you. Please have an amazing week. Five o'clock at New Birth. Five o'clock at New Birth. Please be in prayer. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you. Grant you peace. Go now in the power of God's Holy Spirit, knowing you are built different. Now go out and make a difference in Jesus' name. Peace. We praise God for this impactful experience and for your joining us during it. Check us out on social media and please like, share, and subscribe at Friendship West. Then go to www.friendshipwest.org to find out more about this marvelous movement. Find out how to participate through sharing your prayers, sharing your offerings or monetary gifts, or sharing and investing your time volunteering with this difference-making ministry. 
For you who are viewing as visitors, you can share that you are here by taking time to text FWBIZ to the number 28950. For those who want to, this time that you are visiting to be the last time that you are a visitor, you can become part of our fabulous family of faith, either by calling 469-498-0210 or by emailing join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name, your last name, and your cell number. Either way, we look forward to hearing from you. We're so excited that you are here. Until next time, blessings on you. Friendship West Baptist Church.